In this video, we're going to find the Fourier series for the so-called square wave function. Um, so the square wave function is defined by the following rule here, f of x. It's a, it's a piecewise function um, for which it's going to be 2 pi periodic, so it repeats itself every 2 pi. Um, and so as long as you know what happens for the interval negative pi to pi, you know what it does everywhere because it'll just repeat itself. So what we're going to do is that when x is between negative pi and zero, um, the function's equal to zero. But when x is between zero and pi, it's equal to one. And so if you then look at the principal branch here, you're going to get this picture right here. So when x is between negative pi to zero, where zero is excluded in that, you get that it's zero itself. So between negative pi and zero, the function is just on the x-axis. Uh, but between zero and pi, the function is equal to one. So you see this jump right here. Um, at zero, it is equal to one. At pi it is undefined. Well, it, at pi it jumps back down here since it's two pi periodic. And so that's what happens. You see this jump right here, then it repeats itself over and over and over again. Where it gets the name is if we add in the asymptotes, because there's, uh, I shouldn't say asymptotes. So if you add in like a line for these jump discontinuities, then our function, in fact, looks like a wave, but it looks like there's these these square bumps inside of our wave, uh, which would be kind of weird if like the ocean did that. Uh, but sure enough, it, it's a perfectly good wave function. Some people call this the square tooth saw because uh, it's, it's like the teeth of a saw, but again, they come to squares as opposed to points. Um, anyways, we have our square wave function right here. It's a, it, Notice this function is a two pi periodic piecewise continuous function. Um, it does have discontinuities, um, but every connected piece is itself continuous. Uh, so by the Fourier convergence theorem that we learned about in the previous theorem, in the previous video, excuse me, uh, we we know that this function does have a Fourier series representation. We have the formulas of, to compute the Fourier coefficients of the Fourier series representation. And in fact, the Fourier series will equal the function at all points except at the discontinuities. At the jump discontinuities, it's actually going to grab the midpoint. So since it jumps from the left-hand limit is always 1 and the right-hand limit is always 0, the Fourier series is always going to grab 1 half. Y, the y coordinates going to be 1 half for the Fourier series at those jump discontinuities. Everywhere else, it's going to be in complete agreement. All right, so how do you compute the Fourier coefficients here? So we have to utilize those formulas that we learned about in the earlier video there. So to find the coefficient of a sub zero, because after all, we're looking for a function, sorry, the Fourier series representation is going to look like f of x equals a sub zero, some constant term. Then you're going to have a sum where n ranges from one to infinity here. You're going to have some a n times cosine of n x. You're also going to have a bunch of sine terms in there as well, bn times sine of nx as well. All right, so we're looking for something like that. We have to find these coefficients a0, an, and bn, like so. a0, we have to find separately the constant term. The formula for a0 was the following, 1 over 2 pi times the integral from negative pi to pi of f of x dx. Now, because our function is a piecewise function, let's look at this. Um, when you're between negative pi and zero, it doesn't do anything, it's just zero. So we actually can ignore that part of the interval. Um, and then when you're between zero and pi, it's just one. So the integral of f of x from negative pi to pi is actually just the integral of one from zero to pi. For a piecewise function, you can break it up into two pieces. We break into the zero piece and the one piece. The zero piece has no area under the curve since it's zero. Uh, and so this integral then becomes this one right here. Um, as you integrate from 0 to pi of a constant function, um, the antiderivative would be x. You plug in pi, you plug in 0, take the difference. You're just going to get pi right there. Okay, so this integral is equal to pi. So you get pi over 1 half pi. That simplifies just to give you 1 half. Okay, and that actually isn't surprising because at x equals 0, your Fourier series should equal 1 half, the midpoint of that jump. That's what our convergence theorem told us. So let's then consider the coefficients of the uh, cosines. So the a sub n's by formula is going to equal 1 over pi times the integral from negative pi to pi of f of x times cosine of nx dx. And the same trick we did before by the piecewise nature of f of x, when you go from negative 
pi to zero, f is zero and just disappears. Therefore, and then from zero to pi, it's equal to one. So this integral involving f can be simplified to this integral right here, where we only have to integrate from zero to pi, and then f of x is one in that situation, so we get from zero to pi cosine of nx. All right, now the antiderivative of cosine is sine, um, and then because of the period change, the antiderivative of cosine nx will be one over n sine of nx. So since you already have a one over pi, you get one over pi times one over n, so you get one over n pi. This becomes sine of nx here. Uh, then let's plug things in. As you plug in zero, you get sine of zero, which is zero. But then notice when you plug in pi, we don't know what n is. All we know that n is is going to be some uh, positive integer. And so therefore we're taking sine of a multiple of pi. So things like sine of pi, sine of two pi, sine of three pi, sine of four pi, sine of five pi, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Sine of any multiple pi is always equal to zero. So this thing is always gonna equal zero. So it just tells us that the a sub n's are equal to zero. So in our Fourier series, it turns out that all of the cosines vanish. They don't show up for this square wave function. Well, that's kind of interesting. Um, let's look at the coefficients of the sine. Similar calculation, b sub n, um, by formula, this is one over pi times the integral from negative pi to pi of f of x sine of nx dx. Because f of x is the square wave function, um, this integral simplifies to be the integral from zero to pi of sine of nx dx. The antiderivative of sine of nx, similar to what we did before, would be negative, negative uh, one over n times cosine of nx, times in the negative one over n times one over pi gives you negative one over n pi times cosine of nx. If you plug in zero in this situation, cosine of zero is actually equal to one. So you're gonna get a minus one there. And then the other one gets a little bit more tricky here. When you plug in the pi, um, you get cosine of n pi. So what happens to cosine of n, a multiple of pi? Well, it depends which multiple of pi you're at. So cosine of zero pi is one, like we already mentioned. Cosine of pi is equal to negative one. Cosine of two pi is equal to one. Cosine of three pi is equal to negative one. Cosine of four pi is equal to positive one. So you're always getting one or negative one. In fact, cosine, cosine of n pi is equal to negative one to the n, where you're gonna get one or negative one, and it depends entirely on this coefficient. So factoring out the negative one over n pi, like so, cosine of n pi minus cosine of zero becomes negative one to the n minus one. All right, and what happens there? Well, when the negative one to the n becomes positive one, you're gonna end up with one minus one, which is zero, which then kills off this part too. Um, but when is negative one to the n gonna be positive one? Well, that happens when you have an even power. And so when n is an even number, n equals 2k, this is gonna turn out to be zero. All right, so a lot of things are vanishing here. But when n is an odd number, say something like n equals 2k minus one, uh, if 2k is an even number, then 2k minus one will be an odd number there. Um, in that situation, you're gonna end up with a negative one minus one. That gives you a negative two. Um, you have negative one times negative two, that's a positive two. And then you have an NP, uh, n pi on the bottom there. And so when you have odd, when n is odd, you're gonna get this coefficient of two over n pi uh, for the bn. So b sub an odd number is two over n pi, b sub an even number is zero, a sub any number is gonna be zero except for a sub zero, which is one half. And so if we summarize all of these calculations we've done here, we're gonna end up with the following. f of x equals, one half is our constant term. All of the cosine terms are vanished. Um, the only sine terms that stick around are those which have odd multiples. So you're gonna to have to get sine of 2k minus one x showing up in there. And so k is gonna range from one to infinity here. Notice when k equals one, you're gonna end up with two times one minus one, which is equal to one. Then when k equals two, you'll end up with three. When k equals uh, three, you'll end up with five, et cetera, et cetera. And then you, your coefficients are two over two k minus one times pi. So if you write that in a more expanded formula, you're gonna get one half plus two over pi sine of x, plus two over three pi times sine of three x, plus two over five pi sine of five x. Notice that these coefficients always are the same, uh, five and five there. It's always a two on the top with the exception of the constant term. 
So the next term, if I were to write it out here, would be two over seven pi times sine of seven x, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what our thing looks like. That's the Fourier series for our function. Um, so I want to look at the graph of this thing and show you what it looks like, okay? So if we only use this um, approximation of the Fourier series, so if you only go up to five, for, for n equals five in that situation, you're gonna get a graph that looks exactly like the following. So you can still see in yellow, the original square wave function is on the screen right here. Um, but then in magenta, you see this curly business happening so that the function, it jumps from one to the other, it kind of wiggles on the line for a while, then it jumps down, and then it wiggles, and then jumps, wiggles, jumps, wiggles, and then continues doing this over and over again. It's trying to mimic what's happening there because it needs to be perfectly flat a single sign by itself can't be flat even a finite amount of signs can't be flat but it's really trying it gives you a pretty good approximation of what's going on here and of course as you allow n to go towards infinity these things are going to get flatter and flatter flatter the jump will be closer and closer to where the actual jump should be and you're going to start to better approximate this thing so what i'm going to do next is going to switch over to desmos um, so I have a I have an app already set up on Desmos.com. You can find the link for this in the description of the video here. And so what you now see on the screen is our square wave function from before. Okay, so here is zero to pi. Here is pi to three pi, et cetera, et cetera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my Fourier series representation. So I have it already coded up in this box right here. So you can see everything. Um, it is a finite sum. And so what I've done is I've set it so that there's a parameter so I can increase uh, this value of n. So because k is going to go up until n. So right now, n is equal to zero. So it's only giving you the constant term. So you see just this line y equals one half. Notice it captures the midpoints of each of these jumps, just like we expected. Um, so now as we increase this, so we increase it to one. Uh, this will then give you the, this will give us one half plus two over pi sine of x. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here so we can see more of the periods, more of the repeats. Um, so this looks like just a basic sine wave right here. Um, it's capturing, it captures the, the jumps pretty good. Again, at each point where you have a jump, uh, you're going to get one half. That's always going to be the case of these jumps here. All right. Um, so then if we increase this again, so now we're looking at 1 half plus 2 over pi sine of x plus 2 over 3 pi times sine of 3x. You can see there's kind of like three little bumps, and that's because we changed it from sine of, we, well, we, we still have the sine of x, but we've also thrown a sine of 3x that gives us more bumps. As we change the period with these signs, it does allow us to, uh, allows us more wiggle room, literally, um, and that, therefore we can stay on the flat line longer. Um, as we move up to 3, we get the following up to four, up to five, All right? This is the graph we were looking at earlier on the slides. And then we can let us get bigger, bigger, bigger. Notice as our power gets larger, 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 it's harder to see the wiggles because they're getting flatter and they're better approximating these things. I'm gonna zoom back in to our principal piece right here. So notice we're, we now have N16. Uh, so we have we currently have 16 different signs interacting here. And if we keep on increasing this all the way up to 25, you can see that in the middle, man, that is almost a flat line. You can barely see the wiggles whatsoever. Like if I was to zoom out again, like at this scale, you can't see any of the vibration happening whatsoever. It almost looks like a perfect fit. Of course, if you zoom in, you can start to see the vibrations. Um, it does really good when you are in the middle, but when you get close to the jump, it does fall apart a little bit. But notice the jump kind of only happens near the end. The Fourier series is doing really great at doing that. Now, this is not the Fourier series. It's just a part sum. Um, we're doing, of course, n equals 25. If you allow n to go towards infinity, this actually will become perfection in the end. And so this then illustrates how effectively this Fourier series is in fact modeling uh, this, this periodic function.